Donald Trump seems intent on ripping apart America's global alliances. He instead wants to align himself with the world's most brutal dictators, and he wants to shape U.S. government institutions into tools for his own whims. Politico recently spoke with a dozen and a half former intelligence officials from the Trump administration about how on edge the idea of a second Trump term makes all of them. Quote, Trump, who already tried to revamp intelligence agencies during his first term, is likely to re-up those plans and push even harder to replace people perceived as hostile to his political agenda with inexperienced loyalists. That could empower the former president's top subordinates to shield him from information that doesn't conform with his politics and even change the wording of assessments with which he disagrees, many of them said. The piece goes on to explain why this is such a concern. Quote, an overhaul of the type Trump is expected to attempt could undermine the credibility of American intelligence at a time when the U.S. and allies are relying on it to navigate crises in Ukraine and the Mideast. It could also effectively strip the intelligence community of the ability to dissuade the president from decisions that could put the country at risk. It's terrifying. It is a terrifying reality we could soon face as Americans, especially as Trump has repeatedly shown his affinity for the world's autocrats, as well as his utter disregard for the safety and protection of classified material. Former officials paint a bleak picture of what could be. Former Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton said this, quote, the chief requirements for duty will be how quickly can you say yes, sir? The former director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, warned that by being cavalier with classified intelligence, quote, people's lives could be lost. And top NSC Russia advisor Fiona Hill said this, quote, Trump can't just cherry pick what he wants to hear when there are so many U.S. adversaries in countries that do not wish the U.S. well. You heard it from those up close and personal to the Trump show the first time. Second one would be an unmitigated national security disaster. It's where we start the hour with former principal deputy director of national intelligence, Sue Gordon. So, Sue Gordon, when I think of what's good about being back at work and about covering this moment, I think about the opportunity to talk to you, because I'm guessing that if, if you didn't feel that there was some need to be out there, you might not be? Yeah, I love America. I, I, um, and I think this is a consequential moment. Um, I think the world is fraught and disrupted. And I think in times of uncertainty, it is really tough for democracies and authoritarianism looks really attractive. So to me, that's what's at stake. Um, and so I'm so delighted to come back and talk to you. <laughs> I love talking about intelligence because I think it, it's kind of arcane, but it is so foundational to national security and who we are that I think understanding what the former president thought of it and what he might do with it is important for us to talk about. So just start us there. Tell mm -hmm. us what he thought of it and what he might do with it in, in your, your assessment. Yeah, well, I, I think to, to begin with, I don't think he fundamentally understood that, that intelligence is one of the great advantages and tools of statecraft that anyone has. It is my parlance, uh, knowing the truth, allowing you to see beyond the horizon and let leaders act before events dictate. It has nothing to do with opinion. It has only to do with the ruthless quest to see what is rather than what you prefer. That's all it is. And so giving that to a president. But it's so opposite of right. everything we see him do in public. Exactly. Did you ever see a private version of Trump that's better than what we see publicly? Uh, yeah, sure. There were, there were plenty of times that he listened intently to what we had to say. But it requires understanding what it allows you to do, right? It allows you to know with certainty, allows you to talk behind closed doors with the most um, both friendly and unfriendly of adversaries to say, here is what is we need to act together be below the surface. It is just such a tremendous tool of stability when used to effect and when misused it does quite the opposite. It can be a tool of instability, of creating distrust, of creating mayhem, of not understanding second and third effects. So I, I think he just doesn't understand it. He saw it as something that was disadvantageous to him because it was inconvenient. 
And because it was the truth. It was the truth. And it was inconvenient to what he wanted to achieve. Now, that's not different than other presidents have thought. President Obama once said, you all do understand that you steal my decision space. Yeah. That's right, because it is an inconvenient truth. But what it allows is good decision making, and that's what national security is, and that's what we count on the president to do. And if you don't use it, you're undermining national security of the American people. Worse, if you misuse it and you use it for a small purpose or to mischaracterize it, you can destroy the friendships that Turnbull was just saying. If, if the advantage of America is that we have friends. But friends trust each other. What happens when we can't be trusted? When what we say is not foundational or the information that has been shared is not protected. So I think... I think well, what's, what's the answer to that? What happens when we can't be trusted? Uh, we won't have impact. And then you break into a world where um, each gets his own. And, what does that look like? Uh, Putin deciding that he wants... Ukraine. And we do nothing. I mean, look at how hard the intelligence community has worked to try and shed light on that circumstance. Look how hard the intelligence community has worked to declassify information so that we could counter a narrative that Putin would put forward. But it did so because it had a process by which it understood the value of the information, the community it was trying to align, and how it could be used to put light on evil. But that is not as simplistic, I want it, or I want to do it. That is a thoughtful execution of national security. What if you, I mean, if you reverse engineer it to, okay. to Trump has said, and we'll just deal with what's in the public sphere. Yep. I, I won't press you for anything you, you saw in your official capacity. But in the public sphere, he said he would end the war in two days. Um, it's nonsensical. It's nonsensical. But in the public sphere, he's also said nothing but glowing things about Putin and Russia. Um, what do you? What is happening? What is being gamed out in closed behind closed doors in Kiev and Washington as possible? Uh, I think. I think the strength of our system. And I think this is what's in peril. So I'll give you the strength and what's being mm -hmm. gamed out, mm -hmm. and then I'll tell you what's in peril. So what's, the strength of our system is that we have installed bureaucracies. I know it's really fun to call them as a deep state, as though they have malfeasance. That is not my experience. These are a bunch of people who have spent their lifetime doing the backbreaking physical labor of national security. And they understand how it works. They understand the Constitution. They understand their partners and colleagues. They understand geopolitics. And when presented with the situation, they give their best. They give their view. lives sometimes. They, they do. And that's what's going on right now, globally with our coalition, to try and counter what's going on between Russia and Ukraine. Right? And we do that because of all the work of that great apparatus. I think what's in peril is if you put the wrong leader in charge of this thing called national security or an intelligence, um, they don't understand what they're sitting on top of. They un don't understand the responsibility of their mission. They don't understand the commitment of their women and men. They don't understand the cost of the collection of that information. So it becomes not this strength, but something that can be casually is thrown away as a party favor or a soundbite or to be able to say, I got something small. So that's one. You can put the wrong leader in charge. You can misuse the information so that you put either billions of dollars or, more importantly, lives at risk. Uh, if you misuse that information, people will start sharing with you. And make no mistake, we get most of what we know from somebody else's participation with us. And finally, you'll break the institution. Why would anyone want to come and do this if every single day the American people are told, being told that they're not worthy, that they are other than what they know themselves to be, which is trying to keep America and her interests safe for democracy. So the ripple effect... Is it fair effect, to ask if that's the end goal, to break the institutions on Trump's part? It, the institutions are inconvenient because they were designed to be inconvenient. They were designed to have... You don't want government to be so fast 
that it is just the whim of the person. It's designed to be transparent and fair and repeatable and work against the system. Now, I've spent my whole career thinking it wasn't good enough. I'm a revolutionary within the systems, but I will tell you, if you think we don't need government, you're not thinking. Yes, let's make it better. Do you think that Trump thinks yeah, that? I don't, I don't think, I think it's inconvenient. I think it is massively inconvenient. I think he is confused what are legitimate concerns about his behavior, what are legitimate warnings about the intention of our adversaries and competitors. I've said this to him. I will say it again. Anyone who thinks that you have to be complicit to be used does not understand the interests of our adversaries and competitors. Do you think Putin was using him or would like to use him in the future? My, I, the doctrine of the former Soviet Union and now Russia is to undermine democracy, particularly that practiced by the United States. Yes, that is doctrinally one of his intentions. And one of the ways you do that most effectively, and they have since the Second World War, is to undermine our belief in ourselves. And what better way to do that than to convince somebody that what they're doing is what they want when it's actually what you hope to achieve?